Hey, Bernie, campaign workers want their money. And NASA wants to send a woman to the moon. I'm Jamal Simmons, and this is Why You Should Care. Unionized field organizers working for Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign are fighting with the campaign's management over wages. The workers argue their compensation and treatment does not match the ideal Sanders champions in his campaign rhetoric. These staffers demand an annual salary equivalent to making $15 an hour, which is the wage that Sanders argues should be the federal minimum. And the House just passed a bill yesterday saying the same thing. Here's why you should care. Workers' rights is one of Bernie Sanders' 2020 campaign rallying cries. This year, we saw him march with McDonald's employees seeking higher wages, and he pressured Walmart shareholders to pay their workers more. But can you run a presidential campaign as a union shop? Sanders isn't alone. Elizabeth Warren and Julian Castro are doing this too. Now, I've been involved in a round campaign since I was 13 years old. I got my first professional campaign job when I was 21, and I'm struggling on this one to see how it works. Campaigns have long hours and strange demands. They're like startups where the job is just to get things done. The phrase, not in my job description, or I'm off today, I can't do that, would never have been heard a few years ago. But you know, the world changes and people do things differently. If every campaign is run, defined by labor rules, maybe the world would be a better place. But until then, I wonder if these campaign teams just aren't hurting themselves in the long run. Tomorrow marks the 50th anniversary of a man landing on the moon. After Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins boarded the largest rocket ever built, the Saturn V. People around the world watched the historic landing on July 20th, 1969, and they heard Armstrong say, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Given the challenge by John F. Kennedy, it was an amazing feat showing the imagination, endurance, and capabilities of the human species. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Here's why you should care today. It's time to go back. NASA's working on another mission to the moon. This time, to establish a more permanent human presence there or in orbit, the mission is called Artemis, after the Greek goddess. That might be a fitting name, not only because Artemis was the twin sister of Apollo, but also NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine promises the first woman astronaut will land on the moon in their next mission. NASA's newest class of astronaut candidates includes seven men and five women. So how about NASA's plans? Bridenstine previewed it when he visited us this morning on Rising. This time we have an opportunity to go back um, with not just the next man, but the first woman. We also need to develop the technologies and the capabilities to go to Mars. And the president has been clear, um, our goal is Mars, the moon, is a waypoint on the way to the destination. You heard that right, the moon is just a stepping stone. If humans can live on the moon, they are more likely to survive on Mars. To get to the red planet, the Trump administration aims to put humans back on the moon by the year 2024. Until then, we'll just dream of what's possible. Here's a special treat for everybody who's in DC. An image of the historic Saturn V rocket will be projected onto the Washington Monument all week long. Check it out if you're in town. That does it for today's show. Let us know what you think in the comments or join the conversation on social media using the hashtag WISC and catch more great content from Hill TV by subscribing to the Hill's YouTube channel. Just click the bell so you know about new videos when we post them. I'm Jamal Simmons, and that's why you should care. Catch you next time.